As I indicated uh, yesterday and earlier today, we've now come to the comments in the margin section. This is in fact a uh, unique opportunity for participating nations in IONS and this conference to uh, contribute to the seminar discussions and uh, through that participation further the, uh, the fundamental aims of IONS, a uh, unique and wonderful opportunity of this particular symposium. We have two uh, sessions this afternoon, uh, one from our Iranian delegation and one from uh, Pakistan. And uh, I'd firstly like to introduce uh, Rear Admiral Jafari Tarani from the Iranian Navy. Uh, Rear Admiral Jafari Tarani has served on surface ships and has been the commander of an Iranian Navy submarine and also the commander of the submarine flotilla. He has commanded the Maritime University and after being promoted to Rear Admiral in mid-2013, he has been serving as the Naval Staff Coordinator and the third in command of the Iranian Navy. Rear Admiral Jafari Tarani has served for 32 years and is recognised for his exceptional commitment in the defence of Iran. He is married, he has a son who's completing the last year of secondary school and is currently living in Tehran. Rear Admiral Jafari Tarani, we welcome your comments. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Senator the Honorable David Johnston, Minister of Defense, Chiefs of Navy, Heads of Delegation, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is my honor as representative of Islamic Republic of Iran Navy to participate in this valuable symposium in beautiful city of Perth in such a cordial gathering. As we know, sea as common theater for presence and interaction of world nations is considered as a multidimensional environment that found a variety of areas such as economics, politics, culture, and security together. When we talk about maritime security, we in fact point out to the center of intersection which enables nations in their interest extraction from seas and oceans to reach the national goals. The presence in their theater and the paying role will be necessary for clear understanding of the manner of communication and interaction. Highly growing maritime technologies and new unequal social condition have made the situation capable for the presence of all in addition to the nation's interests, illegitimate non-state and non-governmental actors in the theater due to the competitive benefits. As a result, maritime security has been influenced by numerous actors who necessarily don't tolerate national and international regulations. But of course, the costs are the major source to produce sea power. Furthermore, sea power without a connection with the coast is very much vulnerable. Under these circumstances, security in this general concept provides the condition for continuously development of maritime activities. Naval forces are main actors responsible for ensuring maritime security, part particularly for slugs. Collective security is the most desirable form of security that can be established by collective participations and contribution of stakeholders in this theater. However, it should be considered that the concept of collective security is not to put a group subservient of some others. In other words, 
collective security without collective interest is injustice. That's why so far the Iranian Navy, by taking its responsibilities, has played its role to establish security in the region independently. By this preamble, the distinguished measures of Islamic Republic of Iran Navy to ensure security in the region are establishment of maritime security in the region of Persian Gulf, Strait of Hormuz and Oman Sea via contentious patrolling of territorial and free waters beside our regional countries. Cooperation in security building in north of Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Aden. Participating in Indian Ocean Naval Symposium to build and to make decisions for better collective security. Training and education interactions, exchange of naval goodwill visits, conducting search and rescue exercises with neighbor countries, capacity building for developing partnerships to provide collective security and also planning to develop the reasonable Navy. Despite of sanctions, Iranian Navy has been able to reach the required technologies to manufacture a variety of naval ships with expected capabilities through the capacity building and initiating for manufacturing frigates, training ships, and ocean worthiness multi-purpose naval ships. Hereby, we have been tried to take responsibility in respect to the region and international community to provide desired regional maritime security through self-sufficiency with acquisition required vessels at the same time participate to reach a collective security in the Indian Ocean region. In this context, our Supreme Leader, our Supreme Leader said, and I quote, the Navy in turn is not an internal limited force, but is a force which notices to series of surrounding issues and it is present in the scene. These are business of a Navy. Therefore, it has international, political, scientific, and military role. Don't forget that these are all the characteristics of our Navy and its effect on national reclamation, I unquote. Let me conclude this very short presentation. I tried to present just part of Iranian Navy steps to achieve regional and international collective security. We believe that achievement to optimal global maritime security with the access of regional countries and participation of other stakeholders in the, is the only way to establish regional maritime security without the need of formation any task force with the access of trust regional countries at all. Under these circumstances, the security vacuum, which can be the result of underdevelopment costs and also lack of reasonable navy in some parts of the Indian Ocean, will be resolved through establishment of ION's naval task force, because the reasonable navy is a navy proportional to the geopolitics way national interest at sea and the responsibility of each country among the region and the world. Finally, it's recommended that a reasonable navy is required for each regional country to contribute in collective maritime security building. In order to achieve a common vision, desirable maritime security and to prevent environmental surprise, formation of a future plan center with the access of symposium is required. In order to confront the possible vacuum security in the region and to achieve a desirable collective security, formation of a joint combat force with the access of ions is required. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, sir. Our second uh, section in comments in the margin is from uh, the Pakistan delegation, and I'd like to welcome Admiral Asif as, as the uh, Pakistan Chief of Naval Staff. Admiral Asif joined the Pakistan Navy in 1972 and was selected for uh, training at Britannia Royal Naval College, Dartmouth in the UK. His command experience includes the Commander of the Pakistan Fleet, Commander Logistics and Director General Pakistan Maritime Security Agency. His uh, prominent staff appointments at Naval Headquarters include Deputy Chief of Naval Staff Operations, Deputy Chief of Staff Naval Staff Projects and Assistant Chief of Staff Plans. Admiral Asif was promoted to the rank of Admiral and his appointment as the Chief of Naval Staff on the 7th of October 2011. He is a graduate of the Naval Command and Staff College Indonesia and the National Defence College Islamabad. He holds a Master's in Science in War Studies and has been recognised by both the Pakistan and French governments for the rescue of French and other nationals in the Maldives during the tsunami in 2004, December 2004. And in acknowledgement of his distinguished contributions towards the Royal Saudi Naval Forces, he's been awarded King, by King Abdul the uh, Class Excellent, uh, I'm sorry, the King Abdul Medal in the bracket of Class Excellent by the Royal Saudi Government. Admiral Asif has also been awarded the Legion of Merit of the Turkish Armed Forces and the Legion of Merit by the Government of the United States of America. Admiral Asif, we welcome your comments. Senator David Johnston, Minister for Defence, Vice Admiral Griggs, Chief of the Royal Australian Navy, Chiefs of Navies, Heads of Coast Guards from IANS members, member countries and beyond, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. I thank the Royal Australian Navy for arranging this symposium. I think very valuable information and ideas have been shared by learned speakers yes, since yesterday. I hope this symposium will contribute significantly in developing consensus on subjects of common interest to the participants. Importance of the Indian Ocean has been highlighted by many experts in the last two days. I shall very briefly talk about the contributions being made by the Pakistan Navy in the maritime security in area close to our coast, since I believe some of the people may not be aware of. Since the oceans are common heritage of mankind, no one country can tackle the challenges alone. Therefore, nations are resorting to collaborative maritime security apparatus and establishment of maritime organizations and combined task forces like Task Force 150, 151, IONS, and WPNS are all in line with the same dictum. This is the reason that Pakistan Navy was the first Navy of the region to join Coalition Maritime Campaign Plan in 2004 and Anti-Piracy Task Force 151 in 2009. We have so far contributed ships with em embarked helicopters 69 times to the CMCP. Since April 2004, our units have cumulatively clocked close to 80,000 hours at sea, having investigated over 8,000 ships and undertaken over 100 boarding operations along with flag veri verifications of many vessels. Surveillance efforts of embarked helicopters uh, have been for over 2,000 hours, whereas 
that of the LRMPs have been more than 100 sorties so far. Our ships regularly undertake counter piracy operations along with Pakistan Maritime Security Agency, which is equivalent of the Coast Guard, due to which, fortunately, no untoward incident has occurred in our area. Resultantly, we think merchant ships emanating from the Strait of Malacca and Gulf have been passing very close to our coast because they find it safer rather than following the direct route. And Pakistan Navy's proactive engagement with international coalition has also made it possible to effectively monitor and control drugs and arms smuggling in the North Arabian Sea. Besides Pakistan Navy, Pakistan Maritime Security Agency is also actively contributing in maritime security operations and SAR in our region. As a result of these operations, our ships in conjunction with Pakistan Maritime Security Agency and at times with other coalition ships have seized more than 80 tons of narcotics in the last decade. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to mention about the recent drug haul by Pakistan Navy ship Alamgir in coordination with HMAS Melbourne. The ships were operating as part of Task Force 150 and seized around two tons of cannabis east of Masira Island on 18th of February 2014. Pakistan Navy has always actively remained in the forefront to fulfill its international obligations and to provide humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to the affected nations in the region. Our ships took part in the SAR operations in Maldives after tsunami in 2004 and rehabilitation in Sri Lanka and Indonesia. A most notable incident was rescue of a di distressed MV Suez, uh, an Egyptian flag carrier, which had crew of Pakistani, Indian, Sri Lankan, and in Egyptian nationalities. In July 2011, by a Pakistan Navy ship. The ship was pirated, but had been released on payment of ransom. It was again threatened by pirates, However, a Pakistan Navy ship present in the area came to the rescue and repulsed the pirates. MV Suez was in a badly ransacked condition and the master decided to abandon the ship. Our ship safely recovered all crew and brought them to Karachi for onward dispatch to, the, uh, to their respective countries. MV Suez eventually sank of the coast of Oman. In the spirit of interoperability and common perspective on regional maritime issues, Pakistan Navy regularly conducts a biennial maritime exercise named Aman, which means peace, since 2007. Next exercise is scheduled in February 2015. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, I would like to say that oceans, like air we breathe in, are the common heritage of mankind, and navies world over have a collective responsibility in securing the maritime domain through collaborative security measures. Once again, I thank the Royal Australian Navy for organizing this event. Finally, I wish the Royal Australian Navy complete success in the current session of the IONS and hope that desired progress will be made on the issues being discussed during the symposium and the conclave of chiefs. I thank you all. <laughs>